for long-term customer loyalty, corporate social responsibility is actually ahead of AI and innovation of, of, how, to, of how to maintain that. And so if you think about it, you know, what, what did COVID, I say, with, with the crises that have came out, crises do not hinder fate, it accelerates it. And so what we saw is a lot of companies that sustained, they were very employee centric, they're very stakeholder centric. And so what a social enterprise is, what that is, it's it's no longer building a widget. It's in some capacity and in ingratiating your local community with something socially impactful, philanthropic, and 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 really seeing the full 360 of what your solution provides. What's up, entrepreneurs? Vincent A. Lancey here. I recently had a great time at the new Venture Expo. Shout out to the Load Center. A lot of great people involved putting that together from Rebecca, Josh, Bert, and everyone else. Ran into a mutual friend out there, someone who's been trying to get us connected for a minute out here in Tampa doing big things. He's big into the Tampa ecosystem now as we continue to grow. He's got a summit coming out next week as this show is airing. So get ready to learn all about that, his journey, everything in between. Ben, thank you for taking some time to join that entrepreneur show. Vince, happy to be here, my brother. And most importantly, you know, Tampa has really become an epicenter for collaboration. And that's what you stand for. It's what I stand for. So, you know, extra excited to align goals here. It certainly has a lot of great things going on in Tampa. Before we get started, want to show some love to some other companies that were out there. They will be coming on this podcast, part of that incubator bonus series of other companies involved there. A lot of inspiring stuff. Ben, what was one of your big takeaways from that event that we were just at? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm approaching year 13 entrepreneurship. And one of the things that we speak about all the time is having stamina. A lot of people think about, you know, it's about learning, mentorship, due diligence, infrastructure, which are all part of the founder's journey. But I saw a lot of a lot of different stage startups that still had that day one gusto. Um, and so it, what, what was really exciting about that is, you know, a true commitment to the craft. And something that I say all the time is that, you know, you don't you don't hear about you know, engineers that do engineership. Entrepreneur, entrepreneuring should be a verb because you have to consistently do it, right? It's funny, you, you don't hear that, but I see a lot of people who are entrepreneuring constantly and I can just tell by the passion they're, you know, thoroughbred entrepreneurs. So that stuck out to me a lot. I love that term, entrepreneuring. Yeah, everyone out there, you got to be all in. And until I went to all in on my company, not much really changed. I was in that scary mode of every year coming around, I'm in the same spot as I was the year before. We don't want anything to do with that. Before we dive in, the show is brought to you by Coming Alive Podcast Production, full service podcast production and branding tools from ghost writing and guest appearances. Ben, let's go back. You said 13 years in the industry of entrepreneurship. A lot of punches thrown to your face. You get back <laughs> up in entrepreneurship in 13 years. What made you get started in the beginning? Why did you want to be on your own? Yeah, so actually it started um, back in college. I went to Elon University, which is a small school in North Carolina. And um, I was pretty active in Greek life. And so what, what myself and another uh, president of a company or uh, fraternity saw was there was there was no way to manage communication. So people were communicating on, you know, across Slack lines, Facebook, you know, back and forth. And so what we did was we we used geofencing before geofencing was cool. And we would geofence, whether it be chapter meetings, events, whatever it may be. And we would streamline um, very, uh, just very streamlined communication. And so we actually ended up selling that uh, that code base, the Hilton Hotels down the road for their their event management. Um, but really, it um, it wasn't even necessarily anything other than you know I'm I've always been a big fan of you know collaboration, and I think that's just in my blood. So a lot of my companies, when I build tech around them, tend to be suites of software. So this was event management, communication, agenda for the week, um, and then really it went outside of Greek organizations to other other companies that threw events, and you know really just spiraled from there. I love that. Something starting inside while you're in college, building that mindset. Now it's certainly transitioned to what you've got going on present day. Before we hop into this summit and talk about all the great things you're going to have to offer there, let's talk more about your current business. What do you have going on? Yeah. So during the pandemic, actually, we had just gone through the Tampa Bay wave. 
with a company called eRemedy, which stands for the Electronic Remedy, which is a HIPAA compliant patient engagement platform. So think about the salesforce.com of patient engagement. So we'd sell direct to hospitals. And so what we did during the pandemic was we got to market and raised a couple million dollars right when the pandemic hit. So all we had was our pilot programs, but we didn't we didn't want to be those pushy salespeople who you know had to go in and implement during the pandemic. So what we saw was, oh my gosh, we're spending so much money on photography, videography, PR, go to market consulting. So what we did, we actually created Phoenix Portfolio Partners and we leveraged all of our mentors in the ecosystem to actually create a portfolio of what we call our own infrastructure. So we're, we're now calling it an engagement ecosystem as a service. So think about how we have mobile software development, but we also have all the supporting factors of it. We have right. go-to-market strategists, photography, videography, social media, marketing, PR that we can really engage. And so when I say to venture capitalists, when they invest in us, or, you know, that money goes three to five times further because we're not spending that externally. And we've turned those, you know, business units into a revenue generating income. So really it's, um, it's we, we like to say we're a one-stop shop um, from everything mobile engagement. <clears throat> I love that. And we'll revisit this at the end. Where can we find you online if someone wants to click pause and hop on over? Yeah, so phoenixportfoliopartners.com and then at phoenixportfoliopartners.com. And also it it's super important for us to, to relay that the when you when you see our iconography, it's a phoenix with a prism in the heart of it. And so why that is is everybody knows that you know post pandemic, you know when the world was theoretically burning, right? That a phoenix <laughs> rose from the ashes and were the international symbol of rebirth and resilience. And what what the what the heart of uh, the prism does, it refracts light. So we say, hey, you come in with this one paradigm, and you, know, you get a hundred, you know, you get a hundred more. So that's that's kind of a kind of cool iconography we put together. I love that. And the lesson inside of itself is a strategic logo planning. I love that. And you wanted to really pick it out there. Same thing I did even for these shows. Uh, you're on your own. You're howling. And you look at my show description, that logo, entrepreneurs, we're on our own. But we do a lot of great collaborations. He's been highlighting that the whole time now. We're doing an awesome collaboration here today. Well, advice, if you had to go back and talk to some of these companies, Ben, that we spoke with at this event, what advice would you give them, these early stage startups out there, especially these recent college grads that you met? Yeah, so I would say, um, you know, this, this is, a, this is a, a quote that I think we've all heard, but, you know, have have very strong beliefs and strong timelines, but loosely held. One of the things that we did while we got into the Tampa Bay wave is I wanted to have a very cohesive collaboration, even in my within my own stakeholders. So I did something that nobody else does. I had a $2,000 a month budget for our, our top 15 individuals who our team was about 15 at the time. So I certified everyone as a certified scrum master and a certified scrum product owner. And what, and what we were able to do is we were able to, to have, you know, certain timelines, but what, what agility does, what, what, being a scrum master does it allows you to flex and move on the fly and constantly reprioritize in the mission so you know obviously don't say hey we're going to launch you know in year two and you know push it to year eight but i mean you know having strong strong opinions and strong deadlines but loosely held because in this world that moves so fast sometimes you don't know when you get so robust that sometimes your one vertical is is not the best or you know one team member is not the best and you need to be able to move on the fly and that and and also you know being able to anticipate that allows you to to taper your emotions down because i always say you know when you start when you start a company when you start a business it's that passion and emotion that that starts it but once you start it you got to be led by your pragmatic business decisions and really learn how to taper that passion down so i've been typing up a lot of great notes for when we go live and what to expect from this show and like you said strong deadlines but loosely held i learned that as well through my journey you can be very firm on where you're going but be flexible on how you're going to get there. And that's something I've had to adapt, pivot. He's talked all about that today. Ben, it's time to talk about this summit, man. I'm proud of you. It's a big <laughs> event going on for the Tampa ecosystem. A lot of great events. Shout out to Synapse. We had Brian on this show back on our season one. Now he's exited that. A lot of great events. Podfest with Chris. Ben's bringing a big one here to the community. What do we need to know? Yeah. So basically, you know, where where AI machine learning were 15 years ago is where social entrepreneurship or where social enterprise is now. So and what I mean by that, so the technical definition of it is taking tactics and strategies from the nonprofit, for-profit and government sectors to collaborate to make a sustainable enterprise. So simplifying that, 
You know, we say, and I don't know if people know this, but uh, an AI PR company called Prowley came out two years ago and it said for long-term customer loyalty, corporate social responsibility is actually ahead of AI and innovation of, of, how, to, of how to maintain that. And so if you think about it, you know, what, what did COVID, I say, with, with the crises that have came out, crises do not hinder fate, it accelerates it. And so what we saw is a lot of companies that sustained they were very employee centric. They're very stakeholder centric. And so what a social enterprise is, what that is, it's it's no longer building a widget. It's in some capacity and in ingratiating your local community with something socially impactful, philanthropic, and, and, and really seeing the full 360 of what your solution provides. And so what we did, we took the same approach. And I've said this since I moved back from uh, uh, New York, I said, Tampa really is a city where if you give to it, it'll give back. And so everyone knows my story. I've had over 100 mentors here. And so I leveraged that into creating a social entrepreneur summit. So I went to so I went to all the ecosystem drivers, you know, whether it be whether it be Synapse, the Chamber, UT, a lot of the top nonprofits here. And I said, hey, there's this crazy idea. If I can get every major stakeholder to endorse us. And so our first summit, and we're doing it every six weeks, because what we saw is there's either networking events that are too small that happen too often, or there's annual you know, networking events. So what we do is we have six a year, one every every other month, and we have massive stakeholders. So the first one that came out, we've had Gary Cardone, you know, Grant's, you know, Grant's brother, who's a, a crypto, a crypto enthusiast, a blockchain enthusiast. We had um we've had Dr. Mark Gesner, who actually was at St. Leo teaching social entrepreneurship, Dr. Joe Hodges. Teaching social entrepreneurship at UT, um, we've you know from from the mayor to billionaires to the founder of the agile industry, Alistair Coburn, all come out to be keynotes. But then what we do is every all of your ticket sales, you know, people aren't just going there for you know the free food, open bar, and these keynotes. All the ticket sales actually go towards two beneficiaries that are renowned nonprofits. So you really honestly get you get global thought leaders in entrepreneurship, you get nonprofit thought leaders, and then what we started. Doing doing is we partnered with uh connected it 360 or, or better well known as ngt and they're actually a shark tank for high schoolers so we've started a- incorporating both students that's from pretty cool school and ut so we have all the stakeholders that are coming there mm-hmm. that's pretty interesting talk about that a little more what they have going on there yeah so with with the ngt students which they were they were a hit after uh, our first event so basically robin musler who's a very good friend um and business partner of mine she decided that essentially innovation is taught way too late. And if you really think about it, you know, you don't study innovation. What is, what is Shark Tank other than, you know, a, a show. But what she did was she has, she has a, a multi-month cohort where she takes community leaders, kind of like I do. I think she has 30 strategic partners and she takes uh, teams from each school here. And we say, Hey, the first month is ideation. The month two is building a business plan. Month three is building branding. And then by the end of it, you actually pitch at Synapse. And then the winner, the winner of it actually gets to speak in front of Kevin Harrington and actually pitch. So it's like a mini shark tank into a real shark tank. But what what was awesome about it is she has over 20 mentors in the community and over 30 strategic partners. And what I saw through that is me as a mentor, you know, they look up to us so much, but I actually learned a lot about my own business because it's like because I had to I had to sharpen up the way that I do my messaging to to you know the next generation of leaders and and so it's actually great because a lot of leaders get very micro focused and and, you know not all the time people understand equity debt financing you know you know architecture infrastructure so we had to break it down to our granular core of what we knew business was and it was a great almost refreshing exercise for both us and them i look forward to seeing all of this come to life that is real exciting what do you think one takeaway is from these events? If someone's out here listening on right now, they're on the fence about getting a ticket to come on. What's one more thing they need to know? Yeah. So if, if you've ever read the book or, you know, uh, No Rules Netflix, you know, the founder of Netflix talks about talent density. So what I wouldn't say it's or just invite only, but the quality of people, because the mission is so succinct, it is it, out, of, out of the 400 people, you get about 200 high level CEOs, about 100, 100 students and about 100 nonprofit enthusiasts. So the, the real takeaway is if you go there with a succinct mission, I've already within an, an impact measurement is huge for us. We've thrown two. Our third's coming up next uh, next week. But we've already had over 15 board seats accelerated. We've had funding come from it. We have legitimate impact measurement from it. So if you go in with intention, you will leave with something that is that's cata- cataclysmic to your uh, to your to your own ecosystem and to your personal growth. 
There you go, everyone. You heard it, or maybe you saw it, depending on how you're tuning in today. But definitely, if you're in the area, be sure to get on board with that summit. But before I ask him how to get those tickets, I want to dig deep into your brain here, Ben. If you could choose to have a conversation, a coffee, a sit down with any entrepreneur, dead or alive, who would you choose? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, I'm I'm gonna be a little esoteric on this one. I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna say and I'm gonna say the next entrepreneur that I read about that doesn't use buzzwords like disruptive empowerment thought leader. I want I I would like to learn from the next leader who who brings the next wave of words you know like entrepreneuring or words that you don't normally hear. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna twist that a little bit. <laughs> hey, I like that. That's definitely a first for the show. So I appreciate you sharing that. Appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Tell my audience all about this awesome event. Where can we find this online? Yeah, so if you just Google Tampa Social Entrepreneur Summit, you know, the first thing that pulls up on Google, but our uh, but we made it super simple. Our, we made a subdomain for my portfolio. So it's summit.phoenixportfoliopartners.com. And then also on Instagram at the Social Entrepreneur Summit. Um, you know, we welcome all purpose-driven stakeholders. So happy to have anyone who's really, really ready to put their nose to the, nose to the grindstone. I appreciate you sharing that, all you're doing for the entrepreneur community. Where can we find more about you online? Yes. So bensieber.com, also on Instagram, uh, very active Ben Siever official. Um, and then linkedin.com slash Ben Siever one. Um, I'm super active on there as well. And then one of the things that I definitely don't want to miss is that everyone now knows that Florida is a tier one market. We fought our way to get here. Also, I will be posting a lot on my media outlet called Florida Innovation Ecosystem. So that's FloridaInnovationEcosystem.com. And from, you know, from the northernmost part of Florida all the way down to Miami, we have a lot of great award-winning journalists, entrepreneurs, you know, stakeholders of every region really wanting to deliver un unbiased content that people should be able to take actionable insight away from. All right, everyone, you heard it. Be sure to go check all that out. And if you aren't sold on Florida, it's all right. We have a lot of overpopulation i feel like how we got traffic back up through the roof so uh it's all right but thanks for sharing all that ben everyone i am at vincent a lancy the show is at that entrepreneur show be sure to head to youtube and subscribe to me there for the video of this episode and with that we are signing off ben i wish you a successful summit and have a great rest of your week thank you very much sir take it easy